Hey, what's up guys? Nature Protoculture here for Sonic Academy. Welcome to this Bitwig beginners course. This is a level one series course, which is designed for beginners who are new to Bitwig. Although if you have dabbled around in Bitwig before, you may still find some useful information in this. Now this is a follow on series from Dom Can's excellent Bitwig level one and level two course that is here at Sonic Academy already. However, Bitwig has come a long way over the last few years, so we are doing an updated version of the course here. So the contents of this course, there will be a small amount of repetition from the previous series uh, as we dive into the core concepts of Bitwig. And we're gonna take a look at everything from right out the box, setting up your audio interface and your MIDI controllers and so forth, through to other settings. We'll take a look at the UI, some of the improvements in version five. We'll look at some of the other core concepts like the structure and routing of Bitwig devices as well as track types and a fairly deep dive into Bitwig's powerful new browser system. After that, we're going to get into some practical stuff. Now we're going to be recreating the same track as the previous Bitwig course. However, I'm going to be exploring ways to achieve the same track through different methods inside of Bitwig using a lot of the new features such as the note effects. We're going to be generating parts without actually entering any notes as well. We'll be taking a look at Bitwig's rather unique operator system and much, much more. So of course, this is a level one course for beginners. Uh, we're going to keep things fairly Really simple um, and create the bones of a track throughout the practical sessions. Once you're done with this one, stay tuned for the level two course where we'll dive into more advanced mixing techniques, effects processing, additional sound design, and mastering. Right, so I hope you guys enjoy this course. Let's get ready and dive in. Cheers. All right, welcome back guys. We're going to do a little bit of sound design here again and do one more melodic component for this track. We're going to bring in the pads from the original one. Uh, so let's just go into our old project here and we're going to drag out these pad chords that we have here. We'll just, ch uh, just chuck them right into another clip launcher section here and we can close this down. Right, so we can come over here now we're going to add in a new synth again. Uh, let's bring in the poly synth this time around. So this is one of the old, older synths inside of Bitwig. And let's play this back. Cool. So we're gonna do a really, really simple sound here. Uh, and then I wanna show you some interesting tricks that you can do with modulators here on this one. Um, let's just get the envelope set up correctly here. Put a little bit of attack, a little bit of release. That is, of course, our amp envelope. We can dial in the filter as well. Let's just uh, set this to a four pole filter. Bring the filter down slightly, add a little bit of envelope to this, and then dial in our settings here. Uh, so we're gonna keep it simple like that. I'm just gonna add a tiny touch of noise to this. Right, so I wanna just talk about the inspector again, like we spoke about before, it is context sensitive, so when you are selecting something like this, you'll get the track info, but you also get a bunch of info pertaining to the modules here as well, the, the devices. So clicking on Polysynth, you'll see this opens up a window in the inspector with a bunch of information here. So first, you can see down at the bottom all our modulation targets here. And uh, this is a really nice to be able to quickly assign things. Uh, everything from the modulation section here can be just clicked on and then assigned in the synth as well. And you can also see any modulation sources that you have here. So like the vibrato currently is assigned to pitch. If we were to say take the pressure over here and assign that to our cutoff, you'll see everything is listed here and they can be modified on the side and also removed in case you want to do that. Now we can also just remove these modulators. We're not going to need these right now. So you'll see clicking on this now, we only have the AEG and the FEG. These are filter envelopes that are built into the synth here. Uh, and let's move up to the top now and I want to take a look at voice stacking. Now this is a really interesting little feature in Bitwig uh, when it comes to working with synths. Uh, especially the Bitwig devices themselves. I'm going to bump up the voices a little bit just so we don't have any uh, anything running out there. Uh, now, I want you to just look at voice stacking. Uh, so essentially what this is, is kind of like a unison feature, uh, but it works very diff a little bit differently in that you've got a ton of control over what uh, gets d duplicated when you're running a unison. You can 
dial in the unison here just on the oscillators itself, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do this in a slightly different way. Uh, let's bring the voice stacking up to two. So what this is doing now is it's essentially duplicating this synth that we have and playing them both at the same time. So if you play this back now, you can hear there isn't really much going on there, even if we go all the way up to five. And that's because nothing's different between the different voices now. We're playing five of the same voices at the same time, but nothing is different between them. So to get this to work in our favor, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to our modulation or our modulators tab. We'll click add here and we're going to add in a modulator called voice stack. Now what voice stack does is it allows us to set different values for different voices. Uh, if we click on this modulator here, you'll see you have some setup here. Uh, we're wanting this to do bipolar mode. So any value that we assign this to is going to have a positive and a negative value. We'll do that. Uh, you can also type in values specifically for each voice uh, by multiplying. So whatever value you add will get multiplied by zero and this one by one. Uh, now, this, these are more useful when you are doing sort of a ton of different voices. There's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do here. But for now, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to set this to bipolar mode, so minus one to plus one. Now let's assign the voice stack to our pitch. And we'll assign 10 cents to the pitch and take a listen to what we have now. You can hear we're getting that chorus effect there now. Cool, so one voice is playing a slightly higher pitch and the other one is playing a slightly lower pitch. Now we can also assign this to something like the uh, left and right panning. Take a listen to this now. Yeah, how nice and wide that's getting now because one voice is panned to the left and one is panned to the right. We can take this even further and assign this to the shapes, for example. Let's assign this to the wave shapes and we'll give the top wave shape or the one voice a slightly. You see, if we turn this off, you'll see the wave shapes change to sort of a. a um, divided saw, multiplied saw, I should say, actually, and then it goes through to a square wave. So now one voice is getting more of the square wave and one voice is getting more of the uh, multiplied saw. Let's maybe make that a little bit more apparent. And I often find doing things in small amounts with this voice stack is really great because it, it just adds more organic feeling to uh, your sounds. Um, rather, I mean, you can do big amounts as well if they work, but small amounts just really adds to the, the warmth and the, the texture and the sound. So let's uh, take this one step further as well. And I'm going to just show you, because um, this is a recurring theme, but we're uh, modulating actual modulators as well. Uh, now, if we were to bring in LFO, yeah. Uh, we'll add an LFO, and there's a few things I want to just look at this LFO as well. If we assign this to our cutoff, for example. So we've got a bit of movement on the cutoff, and let's maybe just make this a little bit more pronounced just for this quickly. So firstly, Listen to the effect of the LFO when I'm playing the notes, even when they're staggered like this. They're all moving at the same time. Now, Bitwig has a polyphonic mode for all the modulators that every single key will get its own um, modulator, or each voice as well. So if we were to stick poly mode on, take a listen to the effect that we get now when I stagger these notes. So you get this really rich movement going on, and each key is re-triggering the LFO for its, that key specifically. Uh, and we can even take this a little bit further now. So let's say we want voice one on one key to have a slightly faster LFO than the voice two on the same key. So listen to this now. So that's just one key with two different LFOs. If we start to play more chords now, listen to this. Mm -hmm. 
So you can hear all that interesting movement now going on uh, just by using these voice stacks and the polyphonic mode for some of the modulators. Now, let's just back that off slightly. There's two ways we can do that. We could reassign that to the cutoff, but we could also just adjust the amplitude of the LFO here. We're not looking for anything major, just something to give us a little bit of extra movement and richness to our sound. There we go. Let's play that back. And I'm just going to duplicate this quickly. And let's turn off the voice stacking on this one and remove the modulators here. Take a listen to the difference between the two. And now with a little bit of modulation. Huge difference there. Cool, so we are gonna just remove that one again. I think we're pretty much done with adding new stuff in here. Uh, we can start moving on to stuff like arranging this. Uh, we can get, get this laid out and look at a few things like automation and stuff as well to get this track up and running. Cool, I'll catch you in the next video. See you then, cheers.